Hi, it's Paul from paulbrabby.com and this is a bread and butter video. It's a training video for traders uh, and we're talking about framing charts. I talk about this a lot on every single video I make. No matter what trading strategy you're trading for, you need to understand where the major support and resistance zones are, not specific prices, the zones. So coming into the European morning this morning, we had the Germany uh, or the European uh, open, okay, for the stock exchange. This is the DAX, the D40, the futures there. And um, one of the things before you even trade a strategy like this, this is, you know, it's, this is printed in yellow. It's, it's the expert range breakout indicator. And when it's in yellow, you can look for the long or the shorts breaking that range. Okay, if it's green, you're looking for only longs. If it's red, you're only looking for shorts. So it's like an each way straddle uh, with with a with a yellow opening range. That bias is undecided. But what is going to make that decision for you as well uh, along the lines of entry and whether the long looks good or short is where those support and resistance zones are. So we use the 15 minute time frame for that opening range. So where did I get these support and resistance zones from? I went up to the hourly. And this is where we talk about what, a lot of people ask me, well, where am I gonna put these zones? What am I looking for? So if you're on a five minute, go up to the 15 minute, or even the hourly. If you're on a 15 minute, definitely go up to the hourly. Look where those major pivot points are and if, where where trends change direction on that hourly time frame. So let's look look at the top one here. Okay, so I just need to adjust that down slightly. Just to pick up those there. Okay, so what we have is defining the top of the zone is this big pivot point here where we had the big move down. Okay, that's the top of that zone. So where's the bottom of the zone? Let's go left. Always look left. And look, one, two, three, four touches there. The bottom of the zone, I've just put on these two here, which actually takes in this one and this one as well. So this is a zone of price where there is uh, a change of heart, if you like. Uh, we have moved down from that. So that's that first zone. The second zone looks a little bit more complicated, but one of the main things I look for here is rejections. And this big rejection here where I've put in the ellipse. Look at that rejection of those highs. That's a 618 retracement, even probably slightly more actually, a 786 retracement from those highs. That's a rejection point there. So that defines the top of the zone. <coughs> Excuse me. The bottom of the zone, a little bit more difficult. We're probably looking for more clustering than anything else. And this is where um, we get the big gap up here. And the defi defining the bottom of the zone is the bottom of this uh, gap up candle here on the hourly. And then we get a lot of tests in this zone at this point here as resistance. So we've got one rejection to give us that top of the zone here. But when I look left, I've got an obvious gap up here. And this is the, the bottom of that first gap up candle. So that defines that bottom of the zone. And then look for other touches within that zone and there's a big resistance cluster there which is really really good so that's that <coughs> second zone making too many videos this morning the bottom zone uh we go recent um because we want to look at uh this pivot here and this rejection here so this is a gap down uh, sorry this is a move down we, we closed at the lows, but then the next candle gapped up. So that's a massive, massive point here. Again, another gap up here. The bottom of the candle is at this point here. So we've, re, we, you know, we've we defined a good zone. We can see now, actually, um, in the last couple of days, we've become range bound. So if we're going to trade any type of strategy, whether it's the X-Brad Algo, the X-Brad Range Breakout, Elliott Wave, Elliott Wave wouldn't work in this because we are range bound, it's for trending. Um, we need to understand and define those linear support and resistance zones. Now, one of the things to, to help you understand what's going off overhaul is to go up a few time frames. So if I go up to the daily, I've already put a, a channel in there to show you that that was the original, original bullish channel here. And we've broken out of that channel. So we are, you know, we went bearish and we went bearish quite big. And now we're, we're in this um, basing, if you like. And we're in this range bound period for the last few days. 
Uh, but understanding that we have broken out of quite a long term trend channel here to, to break out to the downside is very important. But then are we in a are we in a are we in a trend downward trend right now? Uh, on the daily it's very hard to see this because we've got massive candles. If we go down to the four hourly time frame, we can see uh, again how this channel was broken out and when we're drawing that channels just check from the daily on the hourly where we are does the center line act as the most support and resistance that's that's non-linear so it's up in a channel and as you can see here we've got resistance we've got resistance we've got support massive support here resistance we come up we've got support just here we've got support here so that center line of that channel is extremely strong then we've got touches on the up, upper side and touches on the downside don't worry about it fitting exactly you're looking at the overall trend the channel for that and the center line is really important now obviously with a parabolic move it's hard to define this trend on the four hourly because we had the gap down and the move down one of the things we can do is sometimes look at uh, what we call EMA cloud. So I'm just going to add those to them now. EMA clouds. Okay. So when I'm looking on um, on futures and things like that, 34, the, the standard that comes out there is is very very strong. Now on the daily time frame, I'd look at 89 and 55. Uh, four hourly I would stick to this 54 and maybe even put a 55 on as well so let's just uh, add another one here again it's about understanding what's happening EMA cloud so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that one to 55 and I always have my 55s in grey There we go. Okay, so we have. Uh, you can see here when we've got two EMA clouds, you can see that the 34 is above the 55, which is as it should be. But then when we turn down and we break out of this trend channel, you can see now that the 34 is below the 55. So we are bearish. That gives us that sentiment, if you like, to understand. Uh, that we are bearish so looking for those shorts at this point is very very sensible uh, we can't really define a channel because it was quite parabolic but what we do have now is that ability to understand that yes we are with these EMA clouds the 34s below the 55 this is pretty good and you might see now tests of that 34 and act as that non-linear resistance to come back down. So let's just hide those two a little bit, go back to the 15 minute time frame, uh, and then obviously we talk about the trade that we're in right now. Um, so with the expert range breakout, we do define the range, as I said before. We look at uh, the color of the tag and the color of the range is yellow, so we're either looking for long or short. Now it doesn't take the brains of a rocket scientist to say don't put the long order on because we're going to go into this big resistance zone. However, the short order would be good. In this, you know, when it's yellow, we can go long or short. But actually this resistance zone stops us putting the long on. The support zone is all the way down here. So when we're actually looking at the risk to reward down to this support zone for this short trade, which we're in right now. It's very, very simple. The stop, when we're using risk rewards, we look at um, trend-based FIB extensions here. This is the trading view version uh, that I'm looking at right now. So the stop is just above um, the opening range. The entry is just below. And then we just move that to the side. It's a three click operation. Our risk reward is over one to nearly three, one to three or one to 2.75 if you like. That's a massive risk reward. There's no risk reward to the upside because we've we've we framed the chart. We've gone up that time frame. We understand where those major pivots are. We've formed those zones, and we know even though this indicator is saying look for longs or shorts, 
we're not going to look for longs because there's resistance there. We're only interested in the shorts. The indicator saying you can go long or short. We only want to go short because we've got a great risk reward down to the bottom there and it's working absolutely brilliantly. So hopefully this helps. It's a, a little training video to understand. Again, it's about framing those charts. You need to understand uh, on the multiple time frames what's happening. Put those linear support and resistance zones in. Go up to the daily. Look at where that main channel is. Look, it's broken out. Say we're in bearish now. Use those EMA clouds. Um, I put links into a couple of these things uh, in the description of this to the expert algo, uh, expert range breakout. Uh, and also the EMA Cloud. Very, very useful tools to understand what's going on in your chart. And to be honest, one of the things you need to look at as a trader is you need to find reasons not to trade. The reasons not to go long at this point, even though the indicator saying go long or short, is this resistance zone here. Okay, there's no reason not to go short and the short's working out. So hopefully this helps. Speak to you all really soon.